First off, I'd like to apologize for the audio on this recording. This is not my normal setup. Now, what I'd like to cover today is several different coding levels, if you will, within PowerShell. So the first one we're going to look at is something of a noob, where they've created a function to do order and shipping calculations. And as you can see, when we run that and get the output, we've got a few, well, unexpected results. So the first one is that they're expecting order and shipping to be put together and then display the order value at the end. The problem with that is that you actually end up with it being displayed twice because order is effectively output on two occasions because although you've got the plus order and shipping, that actually only displays on that one line. So when you hit return, you get the order value, not the order plus shipping. You need to incorporate that into a new value. So if we look at a slightly later version of this, so we're gonna call this one novice, where we've now got a few fixes. So we now have a total as an example. So we are going to return only the total. And we also say if the order value is null, we're gonna return nothing, or theoretically should not um, go forward. Now, as you can see, this still presents some issues. As an example, we've got a default value here. So if the value is 40, you get 40 plus five for the shipping, so 45. But this doesn't really work well because it's still not allowing you to have null values in certain places and or it's still returning a shipping even though there is no other value. So this is again a good example of we shouldn't have the last value returned because we're creating 10 for the shipping even though there's nothing to ship. So this is where we go on to another version of this. So the more advanced version, this is more of the intermediate level now. So we've got some checks to see if there is a shipping and we've got to see if there is an order and if there is return some values. So this is kind of moving forward. And in this scenario, it will only return one of these four tests. So first of all, can't return the first one because there's no order value, uh, sorry, shipping value. Uh, nulls are nulls. And the last one, there's no order value. So the only one that's returned is line two here where we have an order plus. And you see that actually returns. So that's an improvement, but in most cases you'll see we just get an error output, which doesn't really tell us a great deal. However, for most people that's functional. Now we're going to go to the advanced version. And for some of you watching, you might notice that with each version and iteration of these scripts, the number of lines gets reduced. So here we are on the final version and we've got mandatory field values with error handling. Um, we've got if these values exist and we've also got the order number. So if the order is equal to zero, then it's just going to error out or in this case, order return. So zero items, zero order. If it's anything other than zero, it will return the correct value. So here, first of all, it's a mandatory parameter. So I must return the shipping number, otherwise it will not move forward. So here I have to add shipping to my order. And that means I have my first value returned. Second one is computed. Third one is a zero and fourth one is a zero. And this is exactly the behavior you'd expect to see. Now, hopefully you've learned something from this. If you did, you know what to do. And if not, well, comment below.